Hello church family. In this video, uh, I want to explain to you a little bit more about how we're planning on doing the communion service on October the 4th. A couple of weeks ago, you'll remember, uh, I wrote to you and in the, in the letter it was explaining we're bringing together the two services that we were doing. We explained why we have those two services, why we can now bring them together. And of course, the, the result of that, hopefully you saw it Last week, the result of that was we had people in the room and you watching at home were able to see those people in the room and it just created that more uh, unified sense that we were all kind of watching the same stuff. Uh, and it was wonderful. It was great. It was just lovely to see. I've gone back and watched the video. I think, you know, again, Jackie did an amazing job with the cameras and the music group did an amazing job. And I heard from one member who said that as soon as the, the, the musicians started to play, instead of having the videos, which were lovely, but having the musicians start to play, this person said, I couldn't hold back the tears. It was wonderful. So a united service and now communion. Wonderful. So how are we going to do that? It raises a number of practical questions. It raises, the whole thing has raised theological questions and, and all that sort of stuff about how we do communion, why we do things the way we do. Um, and, and back at the beginning, the elders took the decision that uh, we weren't going to do like a, a, an online only communion service. We wanted to wait until we had people in the room. Um, and that, because that face to face, that gathered aspect for us was of enough significance and importance that we, as I say, didn't just do an online thing with no people in the room. Uh, the face-to-face -face stuff um, is, is great, isn't it? That's one of the things that we're remembering as we uh, have communion. It's not just that we're communing with the Lord. He, he communes with us, really, doesn't he? As we, as we lift up our hearts to heaven, as we're assembled there at uh, Mount Zion with the other believers, by faith, we're there with the Lord, by faith. It's, it's not by sight, it's by faith. And so we're, we're eating together. We're not just communing on our own, isolated, me and Jesus. It's actually us, isn't it? The Lord communes us. The Lord communes his church. And so we remember the body. We remember that we're participating of the one loaf, for we are one body. That's the language Paul uses in 1 Corinthians 10. So we wanted to wait until we were together and now that we've got a physical gathering of people we're able to do that but of course it still raises this question of okay that's great for you if you're able to come to church <laughs> to, to the building and break bread but, but what about if I'm unable I'm still shielding or I'm still very nervous about about going to anywhere where there's there's a large group of people what about me well God willing we've got a uh, a great plan, which I want to explain to you now, about how we're going to meet your needs as well as those in the building. So firstly, you know, as I say, the, the, this this face-to-face, -face, this, this actual gathered, present, in-person side of things um, is a significant part of communion, isn't it? We, we've all really missed being together uh, anyway, but, but especially when we're thinking about communion. We, we, we want to see each other. We want there to be a fellowship around the table, people gathered. And so one of the things we want to do is we want to offer you a visit upon uh, the, the visit on the Lord's Day, on the same day that you've watched the live stream. We're intending, if you want this, to come to your home and then face to face, we can, you know, in your, in your kitchen or uh, around a coffee table or your dining table, we can sit down, we can, we can have the elements, bread and wine together, a face to face meeting. We've got ways of doing this safely. And in another video after this, you'll be able to see how we're gonna do that. That we're going to, You're gonna see what preparations you need to make at home, what we're making here in order to keep it all very safe um, in terms of touching things and sharing uh, food around. We, we've got to be extremely careful, but we've got a plan and we think it's gonna work. So we'll explain that in the other video. Now, if you are uncomfortable with us coming into your home, totally understand that, of course. Um, if you're shielding, you know, we can, do, we can do something outside in the garden or you could stand on your doorstep and we could be outside. However it works, if you want face-to-face -face communion, we, we will come to you and we'll make that happen. And, and 
again, if there's a large number of you who want this, <laughs> we, we may have to do this on a rotor basis because there's only going to be a few of us. It might be me, might be Steve, it might be one of the elders, a home group leader, perhaps another volunteer or two from the church. But, but we can't possibly get around like 150 people um, on the Sunday afternoon or, or something if that's how many people want this. So it may be that we have to come up with a rotor system. Again, we're, we're learning. We're going to have to navigate our, our way through this really slowly, really carefully. We'd ask for your patience and graciousness. But, but please, if you want that visit at home, let us know. Let us know in the office. We'll plan it out. And God willing, well, we'll let you know we're coming this Sunday or if it can't be this Sunday at the next Sunday or the next time we're doing it, whatever. But we'll, 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 um, we'll make that effort for you. And I just think it's, it's, going, to be, it's going to be really cool to be able to take literally the same loaf that we broke in church downstairs here and, and we're going to package that up really safely as, as it's all prepared so that we can actually genuinely say we're, we're eating of the same loaf as, as the folks I saw on, on the screen you know a couple of hours later we're sitting there together it's the same bread and wine that, that we saw it and, and, and there's just a sense in that again it's just creating and building more of that sense of unity that we're we're coming to you we're we're including you if you can't come out to church and, and I, i'm sure that many of you will appreciate that side of things that face-to-face -face side of things so again let me emphasize please let us know we 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 haven't got telepathy we need to be told you want this and we'll endeavor to make it happen so please get in touch and say i want communion and we'll talk to you about how the preparations will work at your end and there'll be another video on that so but then you're thinking, well, I don't, I don't need someone to come to me. I don't really want to because I'm a bit nervous about seeing people. Again, I understand that. Um, if folks feel very comfortable doing this uh, at home on their own, um, and you're thinking, well, you know, I'd like to do it on my uh, online when you guys in church are doing it. Again, if that's your choice, um, you don't really need to let us know, obviously, because we don't need to do anything for you. But I, I want to ask you to do two things if you're going to take um, bread and wine at home without a face-to-face -face visit. I'd ask you to do two things, and both are very important. Firstly, I would love for you to, as you see the people on the screen, be mindful that you're not just on your own communing with the Lord. The Lord communes his church. He doesn't commune individuals in that sense. It's not a private thing between me and Jesus. Actually, we're commanded, aren't we, to remember the body. The elements of fellowship and togetherness are some of the most critical elements. As you read the passages in 1 Corinthians 10 and 11 that, that explain what the communion service is. So please remember your brothers and sisters. Make a conscious effort to, to remember the body of Christ, Worthing Tabernacle, your church family. Secondly, I want you to make every effort also to acquire bread and wine or grape juice. Actual fruit of the vine, you know, communion wine, whatever it is, but, but bread and wine. Because again, the, the, the elements, the physical side of communion is, is really important. We don't believe that anything magical or, 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 or weird takes place with the elements. But the Lord, when he says, you know, do this in remembrance of me, do this every time you meet in remembrance of me. If it was all about just a, a mere mental ascent to remembering the Lord's death, why do we need physical elements? The Lord gave us physical elements because the Lord's physical. Yeah, salvation is physical. The, the future is physical. And so the bread and the wine, we believe, again, are of significance um, so that it's worth us making the effort. You know, it would be a shame if people thought it was OK to have biscuits and lemonade. Um, it's not OK. <laughs> take the wine, take the bread. And again, as I say, please remember also that you're not alone. You're with your brothers and sisters. Remember us together. Now, in the other video, I'm going to show you who are planning to come to church. Again, what is it going to look like for me if I'm sitting in the pews? How am I going to safely receive the elements? Look at that video. Again, you'll see it and you'll, you'll, you'll go, oh yeah, that makes sense. So thank you for watching today. I hope this explains to you uh, and, and infuses you a little bit more about what we're planning to do. Any questions you have, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Um, if you want to talk theology and practicalities, any of it, just let us know. Get in touch.
We are going to write to those who are unable to watch these videos uh, and encapsulate the bazillion words that I've just told you in this 10 minutes. Um, reduce that down to a few sentences and get that out to everybody so that everyone knows what's going on, hopefully. But we're looking forward to October the 4th. I hope you are too. Uh, let us know if you want the visit. We'll try and make that happen. And uh, we really, really look forward to, to seeing you. Isn't it wonderful that at the table, there's a sense of which it's incomplete, isn't it? It's now and not yet. We are eating, we are communing, but we remember the Lord's death until he comes. This, it, this isn't the complete thing. We want the Lord to be before us physically. We're longing to see him face to face, to be together with him. So there's always that aching, that sense that this is incomplete because we're doing this until he comes. And there's a sense in which everything we're doing at the moment is incomplete. Let the incompleteness, let the yearning for face-to-face, -face, let the, 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 that sense that I, I just want to be back with everybody, I want it to go back to normal, let that aching and yearning point you forward. Feed your faith so that you're yearning and longing for the Lord, for the face-to-face -to, -face, to be there physically with him, with the believers, in glory. Turn it all to Jesus. It's all about Jesus and it's all for his church. I hope that helps you today. We're looking forward to October the 4th. I hope you are too. God bless. Bye-bye.